Who is Jesus Christ to you? Have you heard about him? Maybe you might have heard what some other religious faith are saying about Jesus. There are some who believe that Jesus was just a good man, or he was just Mary's son. Some believe that he was a wise teacher, a miracle worker, or Jesus was just a prophet. These claims may vary depending on the culture or religious views. However, a much better question to consider is this. What are some of the claims that Jesus Christ made about himself? Friends, buckle up your seatbelts today as I present to you the 10 radical claims that Jesus Christ made about himself. Please stay tuned. Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is James. I just want to welcome you to Truth Revealed. Before we go once again into our study, may you please subscribe to this channel and also click the bell icon for notification for the upcoming videos. And also share this live stream or this video with as many as possible. Without further ado, friends, let us now go into the 10 claims that Jesus Christ made about himself. Let's get started. Number one, I am he, the Messiah. My friend, Jesus Christ is the Messiah of biblical prophecy. As a matter of fact, the word Messiah actually means the anointed one. You see Jesus fulfill the time prophecy as it is written in Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27. Not only so, the time of his birth in Bethlehem in Micah 5, 1 to 3. The Messiah, how he was to be born of a virgin, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. How the Messiah was to suffer and a soul to atone for our sin in Isaiah 53 and many more. Over 300 prophecies were fulfilled by Jesus Christ as the Messiah. You see, while talking to the lady at the well, Jesus made this revelation about himself. Let's read what the Bible says. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Let us now move on now to claim number two. Jesus said of himself, I am the water of life. While talking to the lady at the well, Jesus said this about himself to her in John chapter 4 verse 10. Let's look at what the Bible says. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. You see, friend, while the lady was at the well trying to get some water, Jesus, the living water, was nearby. She was in need of something bigger, something better than what this world could offer. The same is true in our case today. There is a longing in our hearts for something better, something bigger, something greater. You see, this longing can only be satisfied with the presence of Jesus Christ in our hearts. He is the living water. Listen to what he says of himself in this verse. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is at thirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The amazing truth is that Jesus offers to each of us this living water for free. We are told that we can come to Jesus Christ in spite of who we are or what we have done wrong and receive from him the water of life, which is himself. Claim number three. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus is the only substantial food for the human soul. Naturally, we feed on junk food on things which cannot satisfy our hearts. And Jesus is saying to you and I today, I am the bread of life. Listen to what he says furthermore in John chapter 6, verse 47. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Claim number four, I am God. You may be wondering, 
Is it true that Jesus Christ claims to be God? Is it true that Jesus Christ is God? The fact of the matter is, Jesus Christ is God. And many has missed this fact. Let's look at what the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. You see, friends, this claim was taken directly from the Old Testament. And the Jewish leaders of the time of Jesus Christ actually understood exactly what he meant by that. You see, Moses was sent to deliver God's people out of Egypt bondage. So, in order to find conviction to do the work of God, Moses asked God, who do I tell the people that you are? Who am I gonna tell them who are sending me, who is sending me to do this work? In Exodus chapter three, verse 14, we are told this, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent thee. The people of the days of Jesus Christ actually understood very well what he meant by the fact that he is the I am. And so much so in verse 59 of John chapter 8, that they took up stone to stone him and they were actually saying that he is guilty of committing the sin of blasphemy, which is actually false. However, the truth remains, Jesus Christ is God. We find many records of that throughout the scripture. We are told in the Bible that Jesus Christ in John chapter 1 verses 1 and 3 uh, that Jesus Christ is the creator of the world. He is the word that was made flesh and dwell among us. Furthermore, we find in record that Jesus Christ, even nature, obeys his voice. We find that the sick people were healed by his touch. Demons tremble at his presence. He had power to forgive sins. And he had also the ability to set people free from the bondage of sin. You see, friends, with all these evidences, we can conclude to the fact that Jesus Christ indeed is God. Let's look at these verses together. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. By him claiming to be the Alpha or the Omega, he is saying that I'm the first and the last. If without me, there is no savior. So in other words, Jesus Christ is the beginning of the beginning. He's the start of everything. As a matter of fact, he's the creator of all things as we read directly from the word of God. Let us now move on with claim number five. I am the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of this world. Look what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You see, friends, was it not for Jesus Christ uh, in this world, there will be no hope. There will be no light. There will be no life whatsoever. I am so glad that Jesus Christ is the light of this world. Not only is he the light of this world, but he is also the light of my world. You see, friends, without Jesus, I, I was just the man who was chasing after everything that this world had to offer, which could not satisfy my soul. I lived a life of uh, drinking and smoking and partying and chasing after women. This was my life of sin, empty and broken and wretched. You see, when Jesus Christ came into my life, he brought the light of his life into my soul and he changed my whole entire perspective and view about life in itself. And he gives me the hope of everlasting life. What Christ has done for me, friends, he wants to do for you. Would you let Jesus Christ be the light of your world today? Furthermore, we are told in the scripture in John chapter 9, verse 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Not only is Jesus Christ the light of the world, but he calls us as Christians, the church, to also be a light to this world. We are told in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16. Here are the words of Jesus. Ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Claim number six, I am the door. The door to life 
even the door to life eternal, that is Jesus Christ himself. You see, friends, if you want to be saved, if you want to live eternally with God, you got to go through Jesus Christ. We are told in the book of John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Claim number seven. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Let's look at what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. By Jesus Christ claiming to be the good shepherd, he is saying it is my job to care and to provide and to protect the sheep of the flock. You see, Jesus Christ cares for each of us who are believers in him. Regardless of what you might be going through in your life, remember this one fact. The Good Shepherd is by your side and he is leading you step by step to spiritual pasture. Eventually, he is going to take you home. We do not need to fear not only the rules that are around or even those uh, dogs who are willing to bark at you. Jesus Christ says, I will take care of them as well. You need not to fear. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We are told furthermore in John chapter 10, verses 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which giveth them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hands. Claim number eight, I am the resurrection and the life. When it comes to the account of a man named Lazarus who was dead, Jesus made this bold proclamation about himself. Let's look at what the Bible says. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe if thou this. By this claim that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, we have this hope as a Bible believing Christian. Only even in this life, we have the gift of everlasting life right now. And furthermore, to everyone who believed in Jesus, who have now died and are in their grave, they also have this hope of the resurrection as well. When Christ comes back the second time, he is going to call all those who are dead back to himself. Let's read what the scripture says furthermore in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. You see, friends, I am so excited that a day is coming when sin, pain, and death will be no more, and I cannot wait. We are told for the more in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, this is what the Bible says. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Claim number nine, Jesus says, I am the true vine. Look what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 15, verse one. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except ye abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You see, friends, apart from Jesus, we have no life in ourselves. He is the life of the stock. We must remain ever connected to him. We are told in verses 4 and 5, look what the Bible says. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. 
You may be asking, what does it mean to abide in Jesus Christ or to remain in Him? In order for us to do that, we must have a living connection with Jesus through the Scripture and through a prayer life. This is the only way that a believer can remain so as he abides in Jesus through the reading of the Scripture and through a consistent prayer life. Claim number 10. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's look at what the Bible says about this claim that Jesus Christ made about himself. In John chapter 14, verse 6, the scripture says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This might be considered to be one of his most radical claim ever. However, Jesus Christ is telling the truth about himself. By him claiming to be the way, the truth, and the life, he is now excluding everyone else or everybody else or every other self-proclaimed little G-God as the true God, and he is saying, I'm the only one worth to be followed. By him saying this, I am the way, he is saying that he is the way to God. I am the truth, I am the only truth of God. I am the life, he is claiming to be the life of God. Why? Because Jesus is the only one who left heaven and came here in this world as a man and experienced temptation and sin and overcame the devil, did not sin, died on the cross and rose again and is ever alive to make intercession for us. For this reason, for these evidences, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. Let's look what the Bible says furthermore in Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now friends, let's go now and have a quick review of the 10 claims or even radical claims that Jesus Christ made about himself. Let's get started. Number one, Jesus says, I am he, the Messiah. Number two, Jesus says, I am the water of life. Number three, I am the bread of life. Number four, Jesus says that I am God. Number five, I am the light of the world. Number six, I am the door. Number seven, I am the good shepherd. Number eight, I am the resurrection and the life. Number nine, I am the true vine. Number 10, I am the way, the truth and a life. And the question that I want to ask you, do you believe in Jesus? Would you believe in Jesus? Have you placed your confidence and all heart in him? Are you willing to follow his teachings and follow him with all of your heart? Once again, this is Truth Revealed. My name is James Devalon. As John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And once again, 10 amazing radical claims of Jesus Christ have been revealed to you today. God bless you and have a good one.